Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is Wednesday, the 28th of December. I want to tell you guys that I went ahead and ordered my new editing computer. I will not tell you the specs because that'll just create a lot of dialogue back and forth, but I want to tell the person who suggested I make some changes in the specifications and the hardware that I went ahead and took your advice and they are going to build it for me. It'll be here around the 6th of January and I may go ahead and show it to you guys on video, but I just needed it so that I can speed up the process of production. And uh, time is money in this business. I need to load more videos so that I, when I say it is a certain date, I don't want to have to upload it two days later. I want to be able to upload the same evening. All right, so that is it on that subject. I want to bring you guys up to date on the Ink Owl HD inks that I used on my R2880 and I want to review what I had done and I want to show you guys the progress of course everybody wants to see things up close but it's kind of difficult to do on these super wide angle cameras believe it or not this thing is only about three and a half feet away from me and yet you can see practically half of my room here here is the OEM it is great good gloss you can still see gloss differential. That happens. There is no ink that you know completely obliterates gloss differential, even the original inks for the 3880. The neutral prints or the black and whites are a little bit greenish. This is using the OEM profile. I am sure that if I make my own, that will be solved. Let's go ahead and look at the precision colors. P800 results with the PCK3 HD inks. This is using my own profile. I got rid of the cast. The detail is wonderful in the background, especially these dark areas here and the roses. I don't know if you can see that. You just have to take my word for it. Video is a horrible media for me to be able to display all of the fine nuances of prints. I want you to see, maybe you'll be able to detect this. This is the Ink Owl on Red River Ultra Pro Gloss using Red River's profile, OEM. Now, not a custom profile. The neutrals came out beautiful, but the contrast is just a little bit too high, so the dark areas are just gone. Here they're visible, here they're gone. I don't know whether you'll be able to detect that. Now, let me put this one away from now. now this will be good news for some of you guys. If you have access to a lot of Canon paper through those deals that I have been telling you about, especially you guys that live in the United States, you can use your Canon Pro Luster paper on your Epson printers, no problem. And in fact, here is the result on the 2880 custom profile with Canon Pro Luster. And I wanna put it next to the P800 one and as you can see, I have even more detail in my shadows. Let me see if I can show you that clearly. Probably not. But anyway, take my word for it. Now let's go back to the one that I did. Ah, I put it away. This is the one that I did on the same printer with that glossy paper. And you can see the difference in the shadow detail. This is beautiful. This is better than, than what I got with the uh, PC inks and custom profile. This is a little bit more open. It doesn't mean that the blacks are not there. It just means that the contrast curve on the low tones is expanded a little bit better. And so I love that, I love that. So again, it's a matter of tweaking. And let me see. We have very good gloss, some gloss differential there, but it's not as bad as on the glossy paper. So, Ink Owl inks, especially the HD inks on say a um, P600. And if you happen to have Canon paper, you can use it. And I have the profile for the uh, Canon paper, the Pro Luster and the Ink Owl HD inks and I love the results. So now I went ahead and decided let's just print some pictures. 
using the same pro luster paper ink owl and the R2880 all right here we have some letter size prints this is one using again this is all in pro luster from Canon Canon pro luster ink out HD inks and the Epson OEM luster profile so I'm using an Epson printer with third-party inks from a let's just say an unknown source in a totally uh, different paper from another manufacturer Canon and I use the OEM profile for I believe the ultra premium luster paper from Epson sorry about that and as you can see there's not much difference this is custom profile this is OEM profile now the difference is and it does exist let me see if I can display this better this is gonna be hard this is OEM profile for Epson this is my profile look around here I hope you can see this look right here how much more the tonalities are separated by the way this is a painterly rendition of an image okay I use a program that transforms images into uh, facsimiles of paintings this is I see colors here that I can barely see here okay along this little area here you can see a greater separation and more intensity on those colors so custom profiles folks always beats even OEM profiles from a you know a, a known manufacturer like Epson like Canon like Red River like pretty much anybody the reason being and this is all theoretical of course you're using your own particular printer you're using your own particular batch that you got from that manufacturer and your own particular batch of paper you got from that manufacturer so you have three basic um, variants that you have to kind of coalesce together now that Epson R2880 take a hundred Epson R2880s they will all differ a little bit so the OEM profiles have to be made so that all all those hundred models of the 2880 print pretty much similar prints now you get one that prints slightly this way slightly that way well by doing a custom pro profile you will tend to then eliminate that variance between the models and it does exist it's less on your more expensive models than on the more cheaper models or the ones that are considered prosumer so let's go ahead and make some prints I've made a few more this is my favorite image by the way these are not my images I get them from on the internet this is an image of a an old um, camping trailer that was lost in the woods and these are all the spring flowers and it's surrounded by so much color and it's kind of cute I, I like it the results are very nice I got good shadow detail here everything is just fine no complaints whatsoever and this paper combination is very good gloss wise so pro luster from Canon and I'm sure that the Epson uh, ultra uh, luster or whatever uh, they have in the luster family will operate just as well here's one wedding that I did and I've showed you this example when I was doing the P800 initial tests with OEM ink the blues are perfect they match the original I remember it it's all here skin tones are perfect this was amazing because this stonework has so much detail and luckily I was able to capture that when I shot this the the photograph so this has very little uh, post editing done to it here's in black and white this is for Mifflin just uh, north of Philadelphia International Airport this is supposedly the fort that that saved the nation because the British were attacking they literally burned down the city and this fort well no not the city but they burnt out the bombarded the fort to the point where it was almost obliterated and that delayed the advance of the British into Washington so they call it the fort that saved the United States or the nation and it's been rebuilt and it's a privately owned um, uh, fort it's not a federally owned fort and you can visit it 
And again, very neutral. This is what I wanted to point across. Very neutral, good blacks, good contour throughout. So you want linear neutrality in your ink. The performance of that ink has to be linear from the darkest shadows to the brightest highlights with no change in tonality when you're doing monochrome. Here is a shot that my niece did herself with her iPhone. And uh, I showed you an earlier one, which is kind of like standing on a little hill and the sun is shining from behind her and all of these halos and everything. She actually did that by herself. So she's becoming quite a photographer. And I have two older Nikon SLRs that I think I might give her one of them just to uh, give her a little impetus and she can then uh, start playing around with a real camera, so to speak. But this is amazing that this was wonderful. And this was what? Original file was about, I don't know, 1300 max on the maximum dimension pixels. So it's ridiculously low um, pixel image. I got it out of Facebook. So, you know, when you do that, you get the worst quality. But I want you to see that that's actually not bad. Look at the hair. So that's pretty good. And that's very neutral. This is um, part of the... In Maryland, we have um, an old seminary that was around in 1905 as a Forest Glen Girls Seminary. And it's been uh, basically left to ruin until a local contractor bought it and um, developed it and took it from being practically condemned to making some of the most choicest condominiums and single family homes you could ever come across. And they're very expensive. But I wanted to show you this because this blue is ridiculous. This blue is so difficult to capture in print and reproduced by most inks. And so I'm very happy that this ink set was able to reproduce that. This ink set is extremely similar to precision colors and I don't wanna you know, put the two head to head against each other. But again, I am a big fan of precision colors and now I'm a big fan of uh, ink owl. So there you go. The results are very, very nice. It's a print that anyone would be proud of to give to anyone or present to anyone. Let's go ahead and look at a few more. This is the interior of the seminary's old ballroom. And these are the balconies. This has been uh, now uh, completely redone. There are condominiums that follow the semicircular ballroom. And this was uh, in its heyday. The girls would have dances and the boys from Georgetown Prep across the town would come over. All of the chaperones would sit up here and watch that no hanky-panky would be going on down at the dance floor. And so there you go. It's an absolutely stunning, beautiful uh, interior. And uh, anywhere you aim the camera, you're bound to get a good shot. And again, the contrast range is great. Nothing to complain about here. This is a couple of um, what appear to be HDR renditions. I did not shoot these. I got these off of a DP review forum from a couple of individuals. And you can see how gorgeous that came out. And I have done this before, testing other inks and other papers and other printers. And this has done a marvelous job. By the way, the R2880, it is one of Epson's uh, best known secrets. It is a jewel of a printer. The, the resolution, the ability to print very finely graduated tonalities. I don't know how else to put it. It's amazing. And it's my go-to printer, like I said earlier in another video, for doing tests. That's what I use for all of the testing of inks that are for Epson's. This is an HDR of an interior of an old uh, factory that was uh, transformed into living quarters. And uh, I would love to live there. You can see the color is tremendous. Very nice, very nice indeed. Hope you can see that. Again, it's very difficult to, uh, I'm about six inches away from the camera right now, believe it or not. But you can see the detail and I'm trying not to flash you with light. Or reflections all right so I think that is it for now I just wanted to uh, 
show you that I just didn't do a few prints on that printer with that ink set. I just wanted to go ahead and continue to do some further tests. I'm not the type of person who will do analytical testing of inks. Visual is my thing. And so you need to print, print, print images and then compare them. If the final product uh, suffices or pleases you, that's all you need. That's all you need is the final product. You are the judge of that product. If it satisfies you, if it satisfies a customer, then that is all you need to worry about. All right, that is it. By the way, holy cow, 46 plus, 46, 40 something right now. 100, 4,600, not 4,500. That was the other day. 4,600 subscribers. Unbelievable. This is great. Okay, now, here's the thing. I am currently, and I shouldn't even bring this up, but I am about to test a couple of items for the P800. And keep that under your hat. I will let you know. They should be here in about three weeks and see if there's a breakthrough. But um, I don't have too much faith on that. I spent about 60 bucks on both items. And uh, that's what I do with the money that I generate. I'm, I'm you know, investing it on possibilities to try to solve problems. And one of the biggest problems, of course, is the inability of the current P800 cartridges that are being sold refillable cartridges, they do not reset. And a lot of us got caught, including myself. So we'll see. Give me another three weeks or so, maybe a month, and I will be able to report whether it's a success or a total failure. I suspect it will be a failure, but I have to try. So that is it for now. Please subscribe, share, and like, and please click that little bell when you subscribe. That way you will be notified every time I upload a video, which should be a lot more often once I get that new computer working in, you know, installed with all the uh, applications that I use for editing and such and video production. All right. So thanks once again. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.